Day 16, Favorite Professor. I had to go with um, McGonagall on this one, which I don't think a lot of, I think a lot of people overlook McGonagall. I mean, sure, she's stripped and everything like that, but she has those moments where she can be really cool, really nice, really caring, and let's face it, I mean, even though her practically best friend Dumbledore died, she stayed at the school. She carried on, even when Snape took over and it was practically hell. She stayed because she cared about the students and she knew that they needed someone good there. So, I have to pick McGonagall as my favorite teacher. Day 17. Are you excited about Deathly Hallows part the movie? Or scared it won't do the book justice? I think excited is a bit of an understatement for me. I think the movies did amazingly well with keeping true to the book. Sure, they left some important things out, like why Harry has a shard of a mirror. I think fan, I think people who don't read the books just watch the movies, kind of probably confused about that. Why Harry's carrying around a shard of mirror. That he keeps seeing like a Dumbledore-esque person in. I think I would be extremely confused. In fact, I asked my friend Shayna, um, yeah, Shayna, uh, what, what's that, what's that mirror about? That mirror. She goes, I don't know. I was like, yeah, well, here's what happened. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I think in part two, they're gonna be like, oh, Harry, what's that shard of mirror you have? And he'll They'll just come up with some quick explanation like, oh, well, Sirius gave me this two-way mirror, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, they've done it before, so. But I'm seriously excited about part two. It's going to be probably the most epic movie that has ever been. So, <laughs> day 18, least favorite book. I honestly cannot make a decision like that. I could not put least favorite and label it on any of those books because they are all just so amazing that I mean there isn't one of them that I would go mm, I don't really want to read that so I love them all not equally but I love them all and I could not I just oh I feel wrong saying this is my least favorite <laughs> day 19 do you prefer books or movies as much as I love the movies and look forward to them the books always take the cake. I mean, come on. There's so much stuff that you miss in the movies. So many amazing moments. So, definitely books. Day 20. If you got to meet one member of the cast, who would it be? I had to go with Ivana Lynch on this one. I don't know. I love, like, I've watched interviews with her, and I love her personality, and she is so exactly like Luna. I mean, she plays her part perfectly, and in real life, like, she admits it. She's so much like Luna. Like, in the picture I just showed you, she has a rabbit, silver and rabbit necklace, which of hair, rabbit, is Luna's Patronus. So she is that dedicated of a fan that she has little things like that, and she's wearing a MuggleNet.com sweatshirt, so... I, don't, I think Ivana Lynch and I would get along the best because we're both crazy Potter fans and yeah, it would just be cool hanging out with Luna for a day. Day 21. Out of all the characters that died, if you could bring one back, who would it be? Now I got some crap for this on my Facebook pictures. I did because people were like, oh, well, wouldn't you bring back Dobby or Fred? No. Honestly, I wouldn't. I would bring back Tonks. She is oh, a very close toss up for my second favorite female character. And I mean, she had a kid, guys. I mean, how heartless can you be? At least Fred, you know, he lived a happy life and everything, but he didn't have a child at home. I mean, I know it'd be hard for Tonks to go on without Lupin, but I mean, come on. She still has Teddy to live for. So if I could bring someone back, I would have brought back Tonks. Day 22, least favorite magical beast. I had to go with Ghoul because, I don't know, I just, they seem kind of worthless and annoying and 
I don't know. There's not much attraction to them. Day 23. Any part of the books or movies that make you cry? Well, there are many. I mean, let's face it. There's lots of places where I cried with this series. But um, just recently, the other night, well, I mean, by the time this goes up, it'll have been a while ago. But for me recently, um, I finished Half Blood Prince. And it was late at night, and I was getting to the last chapter, The White Tomb. And um, I was listening to the soundtrack for Half Blood Prince the movie, and I just happened to land on the score, The Friends, which that piece of music about makes me ball every time I hear it. But um, as I was listening to it, I was reading the passage I just showed you in the picture, and I'll read it for you guys so you can know what it exactly it says. So it says, but in spite of everything. In spite of the dark and twisting path he saw stretching ahead of, ahead of himself, in spite of the final meeting with Voldemort he knew must come, whether in a month, in a year, or in ten, he felt his heart lift at the thought that there was still one last golden day of peace left to enjoy with Ron Hermione. I don't know. In the moment, that just made me fall. You know, it's because I think people underestimate the value of true friendship. I don't know. And like the deep emotional connection there is between people when you're friends for that long and you've been through that much. And so that quote of just him realizing that even though the crap that he's about to have to face, he still has Ron Hermione by his side. It's okay. You know? And so that just struck me. Struck me really hard. And I started crying. Day 24. Any particular scene you wished had been in the movies, but wasn't? It was in the books. I had to go with the Harry Jenny kiss. Because I will not lie. It royally pissed me off that they changed it. They downplayed it so dramatically. I mean, so much. You know, so badly. That little kiss in the room requirement? No, that did not satisfy my my Potterites. No, <laughs> it did nothing for me. The kiss in the book was so amazing, and mm, they cut it. <laughs> so that would definitely have to be the part that made me the most mad. Okay, so this one I'm going to have to read because it's kind of long and I can't remember all of it. So day, day 25 was... 19 years later, are you happy how it turned out, or do you wish something was different, i.e. Neville and Luna? I will admit, I was disappointed about the whole Neville Luna thing. I really kind of rooted for them, and then they didn't end up together. So, that was kind of sad. But, oh well. Day 26, if you could be able to work one spell without a wand, what would it be? I have to admit, I like to be lazy sometimes, so I would definitely go with the Accio charm. I mean, it'd be so cool to just be sitting on the couch and be like, Accio Mountain Dew, and it comes to you from the fridge. Wow, we would be such a lazy, like, even more lazy nation if we could work the Accio spell. Day 27, would you rather have the Invisibility Cloak, the Resurrection Stone, or the Elder Wand? I went with the, the the invisibility cloak on this one because, <clears throat> I don't know, the Elder Wand, like Harry said, too much trouble. And the Resurrection Stone, kind of weird. I don't know, I don't think I would want to pull up my dead loved ones. So I would, I mean, it would be so cool to have the invisibility cloak. Think of the crap you could do and get away with. <laughs> Come on. Day 28. Do you listen to Wizard Rock, and what do you think about it? I used to listen to Wizard Rock and go, wow. I mean, I know they're Potter fans, but these people suck. 
But then I found Oliver Boyd and the Emeralds, and I fell in love with his stuff. His writing and his music is incredible. And then just recently, I found Ministry of Magic, and I can't believe I overlooked them before because they're really good. <laughs> I love Griffin Moore Rally Cry and Don't Leave, and yeah, it's actually really good. Day 29. Did you enjoy a very Harry Potter musical? No. No. No, I was uh, not impressed. I don't know, a lot of, like, devout, like, really dedicated Potter fans are in love with this thing, and I don't get why. I mean, I get it that it, it's a musical based around something we love so much, but it's just stupid. Their comedic writing isn't funny. It's like, it's just like, I mean, maybe, okay, maybe if I were five, it'd be funny. I mean, pig farts, really? I'm not five. I'm 21. I don't know. Uh, the, the only thing I can admit to kind of chuckling at was Malfoy, the chick that plays Malfoy and hair, like, how she's just, like, all over the place on stuff, you know, and I don't know. That was kind of funny, but... The rest of it just sucked. I don't know. It was just horrible. Day 30. What effect has Harry Potter had on your life? And what does it mean to you? I really struggled to find a picture for this. I mean, how do you... How do you photograph something like that? Because it's not something physical. It's something very emotional. <clears throat> um, so confession time. I used to hate Harry Potter. Blindly. I used to be like, Harry Potter, really? So stupid. But, and I mean, I look back at that and I acknowledge it because, you know, it's how I started out. I am sad that I used to think that, but, you know, it didn't matter in the long run because Harry Potter kind of stuck it to me. <clears throat> but yeah, I remember my old, my second oldest brother and his wife had the first two movies. This was back in 2002. And, uh, and, uh, I was like, well, really guys, Harry Potter? That's so stupid. Ugh. And then... Then my third oldest brother, or, yeah, borrowed the two from my my other brother, and I was like, really, buddy? Come on. Harry Potter? What are you, five? Those are for kids. And then one day I made the mistake of walking into the living room when he was in the middle of Chamber of Secrets in the Quidditch match. And from the second I saw it on TV, I was... Oh, I was hooked. I was gone. Done for. Sealed my fate. And, <laughs> I mean, I, I I had to endure him going, oh, that's stupid, huh? As I went to bed to them every night for the next, like, month. And soon I had both movies memorized. And, yeah, I was completely hooked and in love. And then I started reading the books. I remember... I don't remember what movie it was, but I remember sitting in the movie theater waiting for a movie to start, and I opened Sorcerer's Stone to the first chapter and started reading. <clears throat> and, I don't know, over the next eight years, I just steadily fell in love with it. And, what does it mean to me? Oh my lord. <laughs> I know a lot of people look at it as a kid story or just a book series or evil you know there's those weird <sighs> christian fanatics out there that say it's evil but yet read narnia i'm sorry but tell me how it's different there's magic there's witches there's good there's evil <sighs> anyway <laughs> um but what it means to me, well, how it's affected my life, I mean, because of Potter, I have met so many people, um, especially closest to me, Kiefer and Val 
And, I mean, without Potter, I would never know these amazing people. I wouldn't be texting them every day. And my <clears throat> my brother and I, my buddy, we wouldn't be as close as we are, I think, if we hadn't bonded over Potter the way we did. Um, it's just, I, I wouldn't have just thousands of amazing memories because of this series. I, um fight Quidditch with my buddy where I almost died because I swerved into him and our handlebars locked. And, yeah, that could have turned out very bad. But, um, and midnight premieres and book releases. <sighs> and like, the time I almost kicked over my coffee table because we were watching the Half-Blood Prince um, trailer for the first time and I had my feet resting on the coffee table because I was sitting on the couch. And the part where... Um, Katie Bell rose up in the air when she touched the opal necklace came and I jerked and almost freaking kicked my coffee table over. It's just there are countless memories I have of this because of this series and there's going to be so many more too and I cannot wait. Oh I can't wait to experience those memories because of this series. It I've never been emo I've never been an emotional person. But Harry Potter can make me emotional in a way nothing else can. I mean the message behind it that in the end love conquers all. I mean that's something I believed in before I even read Potter and and then I found this series just a series that backs up the fact that, you know, in the end, good will conquer evil, and love conquers all. And that people should never underestimate the value of true friendship, because it's going to get you through things you don't think you're going to be able to get through. And <clears throat> uh, these books helped me in that way, too. They, These books have gotten me through some crap, because even if just for a little bit, you get to escape. You get to, you know, go on these adventures with friends and, I don't know. It's just an amazing ride being a Potter fan for the last eight years. And I would not trade it for anything in the world. Anything.